Mmm, delish. <laughs> Welcome back to Lightning Health. My name is Sam Light. And I'm here to tell you that fat doesn't make you fat. So I'm not a nutritionist, but I think it's super important to provide factual content. So I asked my friend Megan, who is a nutritional therapist, to fact check my work. Megan does online nutrition coaching. So if you're interested, check her out on Instagram. For the past century, our government, the officials we elected to create the Food and Drug Administration, made a big mistake. And we can speculate the politics that went into certain health recommendations, but we'd be here all day. So I'll make it short. We were told that fat is bad. We were told to look for low fat and fat free on our food labels. That is incorrect. Fat is an essential component of a healthy diet. Good fats improve cognitive function, lower risk of diseases, and encourage pliable and elastic cell membranes. And who doesn't love a pliable membrane? The fat we eat is broken down into fatty acids. And much like amino acids from proteins, fatty acids don't cause a huge fluctuation in our blood sugar levels. Just like protein, fat provides satiety and slows digestion. We need good fat. But what makes fat good or bad? I'm gonna give you the abridged version. We have three types of fats, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and saturated. Mono and polyunsaturated fats are straightforward because they're pretty much just good for you. They raise good cholesterol, lower bad cholesterol, decrease inflammation, and are so good for your heart. You'll find these fats in lots of oils like olive, avocado, and fish oil. A good rule of thumb here is if that fat is liquid at room temperature, it's probably unsaturated but you can also find unsaturated fats in different nuts and seeds. We really need to be eating more of these fats. Saturated fats have a bit more of a contentious history. The rule of thumb here is if that fat is solid at room temperature, it's probably a saturated fat. Think coconut oil, butter, and animal fats. For the longest time, we were told that saturated fats should be limited because although they increase good cholesterol, they increase bad cholesterol too. We're finding now that these conclusive studies that were touted by the government for over 40 years were actually not so conclusive. We need saturated fat because it's amazing fuel for your brain and helps lower inflammation. So if monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and saturated fats are all good for us, what are the bad fats? I'm sure you've heard of trans fat and I'm hoping you know it's bad. Trans fat is actually a type of unsaturated fat but it definitely doesn't have the positives of the mono and polyunsaturated fats that we've talked about. Trans fats are human made. They were created to make liquidy, unsaturated fats solid and shelf stable. But because they're not naturally occurring, our bodies don't really know how to break them down. Fortunately, trans fats aren't found super frequently anymore because in January of 2020, the FDA banned trans fats from our shelves. But you still need to be careful for anything that has partially hydrogenated oil in the ingredients list because it's a sneaky word for trans fat. In addition to trans fat, we also want to be on the lookout for industrial seed and vegetable oils. This can be kind of confusing because although they're both liquids, olive oil is healthy and sunflower oil is not. One of the nutritionists I love says that you want to look for oils that you could press out of the nut or fruit yourself. Otherwise, it's probably a no-go. These industrial seed and vegetable oils are responsible for increased inflammation and increased risk of heart disease and they're everywhere. So as much as we can stay away from them, we should. One thing I want to mention about fat is that it is more calorically dense than the other macronutrients. I don't really talk about calories very often because I think it opens up this giant shame pit, but fat has nine calories per gram while protein and carbs have four. This has definitely led people to stay away from fat in the past, but rather than be deterred, I just want you to be aware. Fat is digested slowly and it's great for us. So I don't want you to be afraid of it. But just like any macro, overeating fat can make the calories add up. Using oil when we cook is a great way to add some unsaturated fat to our diet. But what we need to remember is that some oils are better than others for cooking. We've used olive oil for everything for so long, but we're finding that certain oils that have low smoke points, like olive oil, actually can be harmful to eat and breathe when we use too high of heat. You need to do your research about oils to make sure that you're using them correctly. I make it pretty easy for myself. I use olive oil in my salads, avocado oil when I'm cooking because of its high smoke point, and coconut oil in my smoothies. Just like amino acids and proteins, your body can create all of the fatty acids it needs for bodily processes, except for two, omega-3s and omega-6s. Now, 
Omega-3s are kind of universally known as something that Americans just need more of. They're anti-inflammatory, support brain health, support cardiovascular health, and so much more. <laughs> Omega-6s, from natural sources, have been linked to better immunity, brain health, and cardio health as well. However, when ingested in large amounts from industrial seed and vegetable oils, they're actually hugely inflammatory. We're supposed to consume omega-3s and omega-6s, but the problem is that that ratio is supposed to be somewhere in between one to one and one to four. The average American ratio is one to 16. That's why there's this huge trend to supplement omega-3 oils to balance this ratio. Supplementing is fine. I think it's a reality with how our society eats. I'd much prefer to decrease our omega-6s by eating less industrial seed and vegetable oils than to supplement our omega-3 with fish oils, but it is what it is. I just wanna leave you with a few personal anecdotes that I think might be important for you to hear. Firstly, since we're on the topic of supplementing omega-3s, I've done it on and off for years and haven't felt a bit of difference. I once brought it up at a seminar and the presenting nutritionist said, well, I believe it does something. And I have a really hard time not calling bullshit there. <laughs> that being said, just because I don't feel it doesn't mean it's not doing great things for my body at a cellular level. But it's something to consider until we get more concrete research. Secondly, I chatted briefly in my macronutrient video about how I'm not a big keto fan because it's just inherently unsustainable. I don't think low carb diets are sustainable, but it seems weird to be making a video on fat right now and to not talk about it. When we starve our body of carbs, our body can adapt to burning fat as fuel. This can cause some pretty extreme weight loss, which is why it's gotten so popular. But I just wanna let you in on a little secret. Getting into ketosis is not an easy thing to do. It's super finicky. And if you aren't completely strict, you're not gonna see the results you want. I've seen maybe a handful of people do it sustainably, and that's it which is why I don't suggest it to my clients. And lastly, when I talk about having higher neural function when I have fat in my smoothie, I really mean it. I feel like my brain is firing on all cylinders in a way that is so much healthier than a caffeine high. Again, this is purely anecdotal, but while I can't feel the effects of omega-3s, I can absolutely feel the positive cognitive effects of high fat in the morning. And that's it. Well, not it, but everything we're gonna cover in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Fat <laughs> is an essential component of a healthy diet. Fat is an essential component of a healthy diet.